let's uh, talk about what an audio compressor is actually about. So the audio compressor's main task is just to reduce the gain of the input signal in case a certain threshold is reached. Um, I also made you here a diagram where you can see this quite well. For example, here, this virtual line, which is diagonal, uh, means that in case you got an input signal by minus 12 dB, for example, also the output signal is then at minus 12 dB. But in case the input signal is higher than the threshold, then the compressor starts automatically to reduce the gain, for example, uh, 4 by 1, which means basically that the gain is reduced by minus 4 dB, for example. So in case your threshold is at, let's say, minus 16 dB, for example, and you got an input signal of minus 12 dB, which is basically higher than minus 16 dB, then it starts reducing the gain by minus 4 dB so that you get an output level of minus 16 dB, basically. And then as soon as the signal level is released below the threshold once again, then also the compressor is, let's say, reset and doesn't work anymore and is waiting until the audio signal level is um, going to be above the threshold finally once again. Um, I made you here now a um, timing diagram how an audio compressor is basically working because if you had already a look to an audio compressor in your past, maybe you have already worked with some audio compressors on a mixing console or so, then you know that there is basically uh, some words which are called like attack, hold or release time and also like the gain reduction. But um, I want to show you now what these things are doing basically here based on this diagram. I would also not say that this diagram is now the perfect diagram for an audio compressor because there are a lot of manufacturers outside there uh, who spend a lot of time on how the perfect audio compression is working actually in the end and maybe they have completely different algorithms on how it works. So, but in my case or actually in my implementation it's like this that for example if you have here an input signal which is jumping to a um, higher level which is above the threshold then actually my compressor detects that there is a um, jump in the audio signal level and then the attack phase in, is initiated. Attack basically means that the audio input signal level which is basically higher than the threshold is reduced step by step by step by step by step over the time until the final gain reduction is um, reached, for example, minus 4 dB at a compression rate of 4 by 1. And the attack time usually you can set up in milliseconds, so for example 30 milliseconds so this phase would take, and then you have the gain reduction phase, which means that you have a constant gain reduction here in this case of a certain amount of uh, dBs, for example. And then when the signal level is jumping back to its initial level, which is basically below the threshold, then also my compressor is recognizing that the signal is finally back once again below the threshold. And then it still waits for the whole time you can set up. And after the whole time, the um, gain is basically set back to the initial zero dB gain. So which is basically gain one. And this is also over the time of the defined release time you can set up and then the gain is also uh, set back by step by step by step by step by step and until the end of the release time you have finally let's say zero db gain and your audio signal is not manipulated anymore but now let's have a look um, how a compressor filter structure is uh, working internally actually so you have here one time your input and here one time your output Mainly, the compressor is only one single multiplier, which is multiplying your audio signal with a gain, which is just varying over the time. And the compressor actually works this time, that very at the beginning, um, all the samples are fed through an absolute function, uh, because you know um, audio signal is an AC signal, but we want to have the absolute values. Um, to then in the next step compare it against the threshold. Is my sample now over the threshold or is my sample below the threshold? And depending on the um, sample level, then an intelligent control unit actually calculates uh, for every new sample which comes into the compressor a new gain setting basically. 
Yeah, and the gain setting basically it calculates is depending on the external parameters like the attack time, the hold time, the release time, and also the compression ratio. But for you now to get a better understanding um, how actually my implementation of the compressor now is working, I made you here a small state diagram which basically describes what are the conditions and what are the different states. So my compressor basically starts here. So this is my initial point. And very at the beginning, my compressor is not operating because it just basically thinks, okay, there's no input signal and my gain is just 1.0. And with this gain, basically, I mean here the gain for my multiplier. And then if my compressor is active and the incoming sample is basically higher than the threshold, and also my gain from 1.0 is still higher than the end compression gain, for example, minus 4 dB in case of a compression rate of 4 by 1, then it will transit into the attack phase. The attack phase means basically that you have a time of, for example, 30 milliseconds, where the gain is basically decreased step by step. So this means you need a timer Basically, I did not really use the timer in the STM32 because actually the I square S interrupts are more or less my timer because I have a fixed sample rate of 96 kilohertz. And then I know, for example, oh, I have every 10 microseconds a new sample and this is basically my timer. So I set here a timeout, which is the attack time. And during the uh, timeout is counted down to zero, the gain will be just ramped down to the final gain reduction level and then I have the next transition into the normal gain reduction operation and the conditions for this transition into normal gain reduction mode is basically that even my timeout is at zero or my gain is the end compression gain but why you maybe now think why do I have here an or connection between timeout is zero or gain is end compression gain. This is because of this um, transition here, but I will explain you later. And then one time I'm here in my gain reduction mode, I set back my timer to the whole time. And every time a new sample is incoming, which is higher than the threshold. And when I'm in gain reduction mode, the timer is constantly set back to the whole time. So it it keeps in this gain reduction state until sometime the time out was able to be counted down to zero. And then I'm here in my release phase. And release phase means basically that the gain is set back to 1.0, which means basically zero dB gain. Yeah, that there is no gain reduction basically anymore. And in case I'm just now in my release phase and there is a new sample incoming, for example, which is higher than the threshold. And I'm also, for example, with my uh, gain below the end compression gain. And for example, if there is a new sample incoming, which is basically higher than the threshold and my gain for the multiplier is still higher than the end compression gain, then it directly transits from release state into attack state which means that, for example, the timeout is one time reset to the attack time and then the gain is ramping down. For example, it interrupts my release state somewhere directly in the middle of the release time. Then I have a gain which is basically not 0 dB, but I also don't have a gain which is the end compression gain of minus 4, for example. Maybe I have like minus 2 dB or so at this point when it transits into attack state and then it's ramping down and in case my gain is then the end compression gain, then basically it goes back into gain reduction mode. And uh, once I'm in release state and my timeout is zero or my gain is finally once again 1.0, then it will transit back into the no operation mode. Yeah, and this is basically all how it works. And now I will show you um, how I did the C code implementation in the STM32 project. So then I want to come to the implementation on the STM32. So as I explained to you very at the beginning of the video, my intention was not to show you once again how to set up all the internal hardware modules like the clocking or the I2S interface or the DMA. So I just basically used exactly the same project as last time with my IRR filter, also with the same interrupt. 
but I only modified now the IRR filters to become an audio compressor. So let's see what I have uh, done here. So very at the beginning, I defined my four states of the state machine. Basically, I have one time the no operation mode, the attack, the gain reduction, and the release state. So those are exactly the same states as I have shown you inside the block diagram. And of course, I'm starting my state with the no operation mode. Then I have defined some variables for the timings. So which means basically that I can define one time an attack time, one time a release time, one time a hold time, and I have here my timeout counter. In the next step, those are basically uh, floating point uh, variables because they are affecting my audio signal basically. For example, I have here my gain reduce, which basically means uh, the overall gain reduction later on. Um, then I have the steps for the um, attack and the release date because as I said to you, in case I'm in the attack phase and the release phase, then the gain basically is increased step by step with every new sample. And basically it needs to know how big is basically my step um, for the next new gain after a new sample was incoming. And then I have once again a variable for the gain and one time a variable for the threshold here. And this you should know in case you have watched my last video, this was the RX buffer and the TX buffer. But now let's see um, how I have initiated all the variables. Very at the beginning, I said the timing of one sample is basically one divided through 96 kilohertz. So I have basically 10 microseconds for every sample, which means that the half interrupt and the complete interrupt are fired every 10 microseconds because a new sample was incoming. And then I know, okay, in case one sample time is basically 10 microseconds, then I know in case I want to have for the attack time, for example, 30 milliseconds, then my counter needs to count down from example 3000 because then I have bas basically my 30 milliseconds. And my release, for example, I set to 20 milliseconds, which is basically then 2000. And my hold time is, for example, 10 milliseconds, which is basically 1000. And then in the next step, I'm setting here my threshold and I said, okay, I want to have my threshold minus 20 dB below the maximum amplitude. But as I'm using a signed 32-bit integer for the audio samples, basically I have to multiply my threshold uh, with the maximum possible value. But in case you are using a signed integer, you know my MSB is actually a signed bit. So I have um, to multiply the value with this here, which is done here. Then my next thing is the compression ratio. I decided for six by one. So which means basically that um, during gain reduction, I have minus 6 dB of gain, uh, basically means 0 0.5 um, of gain in linear scale. And then I'm just calculating here my gain steps for the attack and for the release. And this I'm doing basically by using 1.0 minus the gain reduction in linear mode. And then I divide it uh, through the timings of the attack and the release. And I'm starting here with the initial gain of 1.0. Then I'm doing here all my initialization, like call in it, GPIO in it, DMA in it, and so on. And I'm also starting finally once again my I square S transmit receive DMA function, also as in the last time with my IRR filter project. And then I want to show you maybe once again what the interrupt functions are doing, because you should know them from last time. Here I'm uh, recovering my samples from the input buffer, then I'm shifting my left and right sample uh, by one bit to the right side to have minus 6 dB of gain. Then I'm summing it just up to mono signal. And then I'm applying here my compressor, but only on the left sample. And the right sample is basically not modified so that I can show you later on the difference between the yeah, compressed signal and the uncompressed signal. But now let's come to my compressor. So the compressor is here. Um, I'm just using the um, incoming sample and converting it to float. And then I have basically two differentiations here. For example, I'm using the absolute value of my incoming sample and in case it's bigger than the threshold and also in case the gain is still higher than the gain reduce or the final gain reduction, then it will transit to attack state and also the time 
uh, out will be to the attack time uh, out in case I was in no operation mode before. Or if I was in the release phase before, then it can also transit back to the attack state with a new timeout of the attack timeout. And in case I just have a sample height in the threshold and it is in gain reduction, then my timeout is basically reset to the um, whole timeout value. And then this is how you can transit back into release phase. So for example, if you have a sample, which is basically below the threshold and my gain is also below 1.0 and my timeout is um, zero and my state was gain reduction before, then I will go into release state and my timeout will be also fed with a release uh, timeout. And then I have here basically a big switch uh, case statement here. Uh, which is differentiating between the four uh, different states basically. For example, in case I'm in attack here and my timeout is higher than zero and my gain is uh, still higher than the final gain reduction, then here the gain is just basically counted down um, with every incoming sample and also my timer here is counted down. And for example, um, I'm not fulfilling this here um, then it directly will transit into gain reduction and the timeout will be set to uh, the whole timeout. Or in case I was here in uh, gain reduction, for example, and my timeout is higher than zero, then it just counts down the timeout. Or in case the timeout is zero, then I will switch over to the release state and also the timeout is fed with the release timeout. And for example, I was in release state and my timeout is uh, higher than zero and my gain is basically below 1.0 then my timeout is also counted down and my gain is just ramping up with every incoming sample. Um, but in case this uh, here is not fulfilled, then I just switch back to the uh, standard no operation mode. And in case I'm in no operation and my gain is somehow not 1.0 as expected, then it just basically sets back the gain to uh, 1.0. And this is all my code. And now I would say I will flash it to the STM32 and then I will show you in order city how the different signals are looking and how the attack phase and release phase is behaving. So here in order city basically I have recorded for you now an audio test sequence um, that you can see the behavior of my audio compressor. Um, as I showed you in the code, my audio compressor is basically just applied to the left channel and on the right channel just the original signal is bypassed. So you can directly see quite at the beginning here the behavior of the left channel in comparison with the right channel. In case you are wondering now what I used as test sequence, this is just basically a constant 10 kilohertz scene waveform, but it is just doing a level jump here from uh, I think one tenth of the maximum amplitude to 0 0.5 or so. I don't know exactly anymore, but uh, the threshold is somewhere uh, set below the uh, lower and the upper amplitude here. So I would say to see this better, I would uh, just apply a normalization here of the audio signal. I can do this here to let's say a maximum. And then you see here already quite well um, how the release phase is working. So here it detects basically that the new sample is basically higher than the threshold. And then you can see how actually the gain is reduced over the time here. And this is basically my attack time. And after my attack time went to the final gain reduction, then the gain reduction keeps constant until basically the input level finally falls once again below the threshold. And this, for example, you can see here, so the uh, input signal makes a jump back to the uh, small signal level. And you can see here at this point, uh, this is a little bit hard to say because amplitude uh, here is now quite, quite uh, small, but I can zoom a little bit in here by make this to normal. Yeah, and basically you see here that from this time to this time, I still had my whole time and then I'm here in my um, release phase where the gain is just um, increasing, increasing, increasing to finally uh, to the zero dB gain. 
But now let's come to real world audio example because just right now we just have tested with a, a special test signal. But of course we want to know how it sounds now in reality. So maybe you should know that in my free time sometimes I'm also doing some live sound mixing. And I actually had a quite good recording from a couple of months ago with a female singer. And I just used now this sound I recorded at this evening to push it through the compressor. And what you see already is here the right channel. As I said, it's still the original signal. And the left channel is the compressed signal. And maybe just for information, I have changed a little bit the um, parameters here because yeah, minus 6 dB compression rate was quite too much and it sounded horrible. So I just uh, a final gain reduction to um, 0 0.7 which basically means a compression rate of a three by one. And I set up the whole time to this time um, 100 milliseconds and still have released like 20 milliseconds and attack 30. And what you can see already here is that the, that the left audio channel has a little bit, yeah, less amplitude than the right channel. But we can see this also once again, if I make a normalization of the audio signal, and then you see that some of the peaks are definitely uh, quite, quite smaller. So I would say I will play them now one time the original um, audio track here at first, which is here basically the right channel. And then I directly will play the um, compressed audio channel. I don't back for no rich man. And I don't scream and kick when this shit don't fall in my way, man. Cause I know how to steal, fertilize another behind my lover's will. I like the opposition, cause she don't take no pill. Ooh, 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 ooh dear, he'll be keeping my secrets mine. I'll push my seat in her bush for life. It's gonna work because I'm pushing it right. If Mary drops my baby girl tonight, I would name her rock and roll. Oh, break it down, break it down. I don't back for no rich man. And I don't scream and kick when this shit don't fall in my way, man. Cause I know how to steal Fertilize another behind my lover's will I like the opposition Cause she don't take no pill Ooh, 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 ooh dear He'll be keeping my secrets mine I'll push my seat in her bush for life It's gonna work because I'm pushing it right if Mary drops my baby girl tonight, I would name her rock and roll. Oh, break it down, break it down. Yeah, thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked it also this time. In case you really, really liked it, for example, then you can subscribe my channel here below the video. And next time I will make an adaption of the audio compression algorithm to make it an audio limiter. So next video will be then about audio limiters and so I would say have a good week and see you next time.